Beloved, January 11, 2019. Today, my attention was called to the message of the three angels. It was let me known that no one who is deliberately violating it can be saved because these messages are an extension of the Decalogue. I was let known that Jesus Christ has done everything for us and unless we fully understand this, we cannot be worthy of his everlasting kingdom. The scenes that passed in front of me were quick, but very clear. I was standing on one side of space looking at the earthly globe, and I saw a thunderbolt like lightning surrounding the earth. This passed in front of me, and when I saw it more closely, I saw that it was an angel of beautiful appearance, and in his hand a writing, first angelical message. My senses were alerted when I saw this, and I heard them say, Revelations, chapter 14, verse 7, saying in a loud voice, Fear God and give him honor, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who has made heaven, earth, sea, and springs of water. As this passed in front of me, and being able to read it, I felt a genuine living force that filled me with joy and also with preoccupation. The judgment ran my mind like a wild gazelle. The judgment, and I, how will I be? I asked. My soul was anguished for myself and for others who came to my mind. I was let known that this message to the one who receives it will create in him a living force which will produce a desperate desire to get right with God and surrender to him so that he can change and cleanse his life. I was let to know that no one who does not accept this will be able to live eternally and that all our attention must be directed to this. No one is capable by himself of doing good, but by receiving this message, the humiliation and the action in which the Holy Spirit wrap us will lead us to the school of this celestial science of the good living and do from here a prelude of the celestial. I was let known that the inexhaustible provisions of heaven are available to us and that many by ignorance, carelessness, or rebellion do not make use of them. It was also let me known that this will not be able to inherit eternal life since they have neglected such a great salvation. I was let to know that no one who moves a block of these messages will be saved and that the indolent study of them will be their own condemnation. I was able to understand that when his words arrive and will receive his instructions, this take possession of us, then Jesus, in a living presence in us, who takes control forever of our thoughts, ideas, actions, and feelings, and so we no longer live with our own desires, but He lives in us, and in this way His character is duplicated in us, those making us His reflection in this world in precept and example, and achieves a transformation of life for life. I was let known that this is the miracle of miracles, is the change acted by the word of God. It is one of the many mysteries that this encloses in its pages for those who see it as a treasure of life. I was let known that there are books in heaven, one of them, the book of memories. In this, every act, thought, caress, desire, and even without caressing, 
are written down in it. Each word is strictly registered. Many say they know and obey this message, but are just as guilty as those who take drugs, knowing that it will destroy them. The names of this can appear in large letters in the books of the church, but in heaven, in the book of life, their name will never be reflected. My companion said, how sad, that having everything at their disposal, they are found wanting because they are indolent. In those moments, beloved, I saw another angel pass in front of me, and I could read what he was carrying on the open scroll that he carried in his hand. Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. And the other angel continued saying, Babylon has fallen. That great city has fallen because she gave all nations to drink of the wine of the fury of her fornication. My senses, now awake, became more pronounced, and I saw how a city in the mountains with a woman crowned and dressed in red was falling, and that her fall was so terrible that she could not get up on her feet. I was allowed to know that this woman represents papal Rome and at its end is extremely near. But before its irremediable fall, will take many captives with her and many will still go with her on their own feet. I was told that each case is scrutinized and thoroughly investigated and nothing escapes the investigating eye. I was encouraged to say that if we do not pay due attention to this and struggle with prayer, fear, and trembling for our salvation, seeking the face of our beloved Lord in genuine repentance, we will be found lacking and discarded from the eternal inheritance. Also, beloved, I was allowed to know that heaven has done everything for us, but it will not do the only thing we have to do is to know, acknowledge our condition, humble our hearts in prayer and supplication, desiring forgiveness, undeserved, but imputed to us by God's grace, and so it will produce the change by Him in us and we will be transformed into his image and likeness for his glory and his honor. I was told that they are measuring us, that each one is being measured, and every day we must bring this present before us, because only then will we be conscious and undo the infernal spell that the enemy wishes to put on us daily in our lives by the power of Christ Jesus working in us. So, while listening to all this, my companion asked, How do you desire to save yourself without this? And he himself answered, No one who does not do so will succeed. We must not drink of the false wine that consists in false doctrines. He let me know, that if we stray from those says Jehovah and accept false doctrines, either because we learn them from our parents or because the clergy teach them, we will fall under the condemnation pronounced against Babylon because we are drinking the wine of her fornications. He let me know a quote from the Great Controversy is on page 364, which says, all those who appeal to human authority, church customs, or the tradition of the parents, and do not heed the admonition that encloses the words of Christ in vain, do they worship me and teach doctrines and commandments of men. 
it was let me know that it is not enough to have good intentions or to believe to do what is just or to do what the ministers say. The salvation of our soul is at stake and only us will be asked account for our soul. We have the duty to search the scriptures for ourselves and learn directly from them. At no time should we deviate from the direction of it to put our lives in the hands of men. I was told that the closer we get to the end, the more falsehood will be mixed with the truth, and only those who are stuck to a it is written will be able to have the discernment to distinguish the truth from error, said my companion, for this is the shaking. Those who are not well anchored and are superficial readers will sink as when they stand in quicksand. This, living at a low level, never scrutinized the scriptures as they should and thus succumbed. And continued saying, there is a form of vain and light religion that is based only on God's love towards the sinner without taking into account their actions. And this makes the sinner believe that God will receive them even if they continue to sin in their actions consciously. This light message, many accept it and believe that with this norm so low, they will be able to be saved. But both the one who preaches it and the one who believes it is totally deceived. God is a God of great elevated norm, saying, where it has proven through many mortals like us, and even in his own life, that this is within reach and nothing that is only a high norm will be that which enables us for immortal life. Be careful with the one who only speaks of believing in Jesus and love because the gospel of God includes recognizing our condition, humbling ourselves in prayer for forgiveness, believing that we are forgiven and walking in holy lives before him. That was the norm that was applied in heaven with the angels who returned after the deception, and it is the one that since the foundation of the world is truly applicable and regenerating to free the mortal soul and elevate it to immortality. I was let known that the power of God is more than enough to change any mortal from death to life, and anything less than this is a subtle apostasy from deception. I was allowed to know that the world is perishing for lack of the true gospel. There are very few, even numbered with the palm of a mortal hand, those who preach truth without a mixture of human translation, but the understood will understand that there cannot be a real conversion without the fruits being seen and a genuine change is seen. He continued saying to me, Teachers dressed in angelic light may come to deceive even the chosen ones. But know that God's love does not cover up, justify, or excuse sins. No one will be accepted in heaven who pretends to have faith in our loving God and yet is disloyal to his commandments. There is no excuse for sin or indolence. The righteousness of Christ is not an umbrella that covers us while we continue to sin blindly. This is a vile deception. Only a true repentance and conversion makes us, by grace of him, worthy of his justice 
and only by his help and to be able to become perfect in him. And he continued saying, when we excuse selfishness in ourselves, bad thoughts and bad words, we educate the soul for evil. God's love for the sinner does not make him weak nor lower his standard, but fights with the mortal to raise him more to it. God will not compromise with sin, nor will he give it prosperity. Meanwhile, it follows its wrong and crooked course, can only be able to cover their sin by virtue of faithful repentance, because God will not cover evil with the cloak of his righteousness. It is preached that the righteousness of Christ is for covering sins. But I tell you that the righteousness of Christ is not a cloak to cover sins that have not been confessed or abandoned. It is only the principle that transforms the character and directs the life of the one who so allows it. Holiness is being upright with God. It is a total surrender of the heart and the life that is those revealed in the principles of heaven. The gospel is Christ in life, and this is alive and active. It is the grace of Christ revealed in the character and developed in good works. Then, at that moment, beloved, he paused and continued saying, In heaven we suffered much the hardship, sufferings, and agony of our beloved Christ Jesus when he came to this world and suffered for the condemned sinner and destined for eternal death. Jesus came to bring peace, hope, and life for those who accept it. He died not to save man in his sins, but died to save him from his sins, a single, unconfessed, and abandoned sin, will close the doors of heaven. For this reason, Jesus came to die for the mortal, because even with a stain of sin, no one can be saved. But the blood of Christ will only serve for those who return their loyalty only to him in obedience to the law that they have trampled. All have fallen into Satan's trap of inducing them to sin and then abandoning them to despair in search of forgiveness. But we must not despair. If the enemy defeats us, run for help in an act of humility and accept the forgiveness of Jesus Christ by faith so that we are not in a disadvantageous position. When we repent and believe in the purification of the power of God, His grace of salvation will offer you freely. This gift is given to all who seeks. Remembering David, a man according to God's own heart. This recognized his sinful condition, humbled himself and confessed his sin in repentance, and a reconviction arose, deeply felt the conviction of forgiveness, and said, Blessed is the man whom Jehovah does not blame for iniquity. He went on to say, Dear brothers, you must fight as Jesus Christ did. He told me he was tempted in all points like us and he remained at will, surrendered and sanctified before his father without yielding to the least to do evil and without manifesting rebellion against God. He descended from heaven not to do his will but from the one who sent him. So, beloved, he asked a question. 
What is sanctification? And he himself answered, It is giving oneself fully and without reservation in body, soul, and spirit to God, treating fairly, loving mercy, and walking humbly with God, knowing and doing the will of God, without taking into consideration I or self-interest, and have a mind celestial, pure, self-sacrificing, holy, without spot or wrinkle, the old nature begotten in blood and of will towards the flesh will never be able to inherit the kingdom of God. He said, It is the duty of every mortal who wishes to inherit the heavenly homeland to renounce his old ways, hereditary tendencies, old habits, because grace is not inherited. That is why the new birth takes place in having motives, new tastes, new tendencies. Those who are begotten by the Spirit begin to live a new life and will become participants of the divine nature. And in all their habits and practices, they will demonstrate their relationship with Jesus Christ. While I was meditating this, beloved, in all these words, he continued saying, If you become partakers of the divine nature, you can be pure, holy, and immaculate. No one should excuse his temperament, hereditary tendencies, jealousy, envy, selfishness, or anything that deforms our character. God calls you to glory and virtue, and you must have a duty to obey the call if you want to obtain eternal life. Remember that only through faith can we gain power to obey God's holy, pure, and perfect law. Remember that this was the enemy's accusation. You cannot obey the commandments of God, but Christ Jesus came, becoming flesh like us, to prove to humanity that it was possible, and thus the divinity confined with humanity, that is, being crucified with Christ Jesus, makes it possible in us to obey each one of God's precepts. And continues saying, Examine your heart. Imitate the divine model in your lives and everything will come out for eternal life. Being honest with God is not enough because there is a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way of perdition. Remember the rich young man. Remember the foolish virgins. They were lukewarm, sincere, and they thought they were on the right path that leads to heaven, but it was not like that. The cross is found at the intersection of two totally opposite paths, and it is up to you to choose. Stop and analyze your path, because the Lord Jesus puts a path before you of life and another of death. His invitation is the desire that you choose that of life only if you allow a real regeneration in your lives. He continues saying, Will you be taking the path that gives access to the city of God? Many and millions profess to follow Christ and do not have a genuine religion. 
But if they really want to overcome, this is the key. Follow peace with all and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. But this peace is not at the cost of trampling the truth, but to exalt it. And holiness is integrity towards God, a total surrender, absolute in obeying and doing the will without questions. God will not accept anything other than purity and holiness, a stain, a wrinkle, or a defect of character. This will exclude you forever from the heavenly inheritance from its glories and treasures. Remember that the characteristics of the character that you cultivate in life will not be changed by death or by the resurrection. You will wake up with the same disposition that you had in your home and society. Everyone will have enough light to see their sins and mistakes, and if they sincerely desire it and yearn to leave it, they will be perfected in the holiness of the Lord, and all heavenly help will be given to achieve it. The Holy One of Israel is too pure to contemplate iniquity. One sin is as serious as another in His sight, and there are no exceptions in an impartial God. And he said to me, Psalms chapter 24, verse 3 to 4. And he went on to say, The only character that is of value before the sight of God is one that lacks selfishness. And this needs to be sacrificed and die daily. There is an urgent need to decide to have a daily conversion towards God, to work while the day lasts because the night will come when no one can work. Only a few within the great number of the inhabitants of the earth will be saved for eternal life. But the masses that did not perfect their souls, in obedience to the truth, will be destined for the second death. A fountain has been opened to all to wash its impurities. The remedy for the sinner has been provided, but it cannot be applied if it is not accepted by faith and desperately longed for. There must be a true repentance of acknowledging your wickedness and this must be without deception or hypocrisy. And he said to me, Acts chapter 3 verse 19, the door of the heart must be opened. And he said to me, Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, the eternal's eye will not sleep he knows all hidden sin and the guilty know exactly what sin they have to confess so that their souls can be clean before God. He knows everything about you and the reason that moves us. Everyone will have enough light to see their sins and mistakes and those will have the opportunity to accept or reject forgiveness. Strive, he said to me, because your reward is great in heaven. Strive to be stripped of the eye. And when the heart is purified, it is the duty of each one to keep it unpolluted. Remember, that each one must meet face to face with the judge and the secret sins will be exposed to the sight of all. And he told me, Luke 
chapter 8, verse 17. It is necessary to experience a new birth in Christ Jesus, and this is a rare experience in this age of the world, but is necessary, and it is not more difficult than before, and yet no one will be ready without it soon, very soon. Everyone will be left in two groups, those who keep the commandments of God and those who worship the beast and his image and receive his mark. Saturday will be the touchstone to loyalty, but the vain way of worshiping to who claims to be my people will not qualify them for the final test. While my ear is beloved, as a automobile speaker listened to such a truth, which was passing before me, another angel of light with another sign that said, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he will also drink the wine of fury that has been poured pure into the cup of his wrath, and he will be tormented with fire and brimstone before the holy angels and the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, those who worship the beast and its image, and Anyone who receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 to 12. Do not think that God can be mocked, he told me. The seal of God will never be placed on the forehead of an impure person, that is, on the forehead of ambitious humans and lovers of the world. It is necessary to possess the cloak of justice of Christ, for no one will enter in his own clothing or on his own merits. We are in danger of being filled with worldly thoughts and anguish. The sealing time is very short and will soon pass. He continued to tell me, O oh, beloved, he continued saying to me, no one who does not have the character of the teacher will receive it. No one who does not possess it. No one who does not possess the character of the teacher will receive it. He repeated to me again, a great multitude will receive very bitter disappointment on the great day of God because very few are willing to humble themselves to the dust like children in order to receive the heavenly inheritance, prepotency, pride, competition, arrogance, despotism, eloquence, human wisdom came to replace the simple and clear truth of God. There is no room for them. In their full glasses, the human technique and human tools came to replace the great comforter. Science came to cancel the word of God, and false history came to change divine truth. Foolish, in their own opinion, cry out loud for their salvation and that of others, and many exclaim amen, but I tell you that no one will see the eternal inheritance because they did not recognize the day of their salvation and despised by human fables 
a salvation of immortal inheritance. Then, at that moment, beloved, he was silent for a moment, and then continued, perhaps for the mortal, immortality is very little, that as long as he possesses what his heart desires in mortal life, he conforms to this and despises the immortal inheritance? The brave man will cry, and the man of war will run because his day has come, and nothing will stop him. There will be crying and gnashing of teeth, so remember where you have come from and repent. Dear beloved, I woke up, and it has been for me the great subject of study in my life, and I pray to God that it is also in your life. May God direct you. May God bless you. And may we all be victorious at the hand of Jesus Christ. Blessings.